Hey, did you feel that? Feel what? Everything. <laughs> hey. Someone's been tippy typing? No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Somebody didn't type in my comments, but someone asked me some questions. So just as good. <laughs> Ask me a question. And when not so much they asked me a question, they sent me a message. It's like the eclipse season. It's a doozy. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Hey, have you guys heard? There was eclipse happen around the nodes. So, you got something in Cancer? Uh-oh. You got something in Capricorn? Uh-oh. You got something in Libra? Uh-oh. <laughs> you might be feeling. Feeling what, you see? Everything. So, we got a precious soul with a Libra sun, Cancer moon, Mars in the, Libra sun in the 11th, Cancer moon, Mars in the 8th, Saturn in Capricorn in the 2nd. Hmm, right at the degree of the eclipse and the nodes. Not so much the eclipse as much as the nodes, but the solar eclipse is going to happen for this person. So, not to mention, if the Cancer Moon and Mars conjunction in the 8th house wasn't enough water for you, if you think we're talking about a feeler, we're talking about a feeler here. We got Neptune in Scorpio, Mercury in Scorpio, Venus in Scorpio in the 12th house. So, feeling, feeling is on the table here. So I want to start out talking a little bit about that Cancer Moon and Saturn. And they're like doing a little opposite each other in a square to the sun. So we got a little bit of a T-square going on that the nodes are lighting up like a Christmas tree. So the first thing I want to say is that we got two very powerful planets in their own sign. Not only are they in their own sign, they're not in their own house, but they're in the element of the house is the element of the planet. Meaning the eighth house ruled by Scorpio is a watery house. Cancer is a watery sign. The moon is a watery planet. And then Saturn in Capricorn, a little earthy. In the second house of earthy. So we got these two powerful forces, and they're opposite each other. Now, if you look at it from one perspective, it's like, oh, that's gonna, not going to be easy. But if you look at it from another perspective, they're here to help. So obviously, you know me, I'm going to go down the here to help road. So we're going to start with that Cancer moon. Mars in the eighth house. So, Cancer is how and where you nurture yourself. It's a very watery kind of a skin in the game water. Cancer said, "I feel, I connect, and 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 I want to be feeling. I want to be connecting." It's like once I kind of open up my heart, I, I love forever type of energy. It's a very nurturing energy. So to have your moon there, it's just like, whoa, that's the most powerful of powerful moons. And the only way it would be maybe more powerful, and I don't even know if I'd say it is more powerful, if it was in the fourth house. 
But the fact that it's in the eighth house conjunct Mars. Feeling, feeler, perception, merging, feeling everything. So, so much of what you experience is you, isn't you. And this is where I want to come back over to that Saturn. And like some people will be like, there's that tension that's going to be difficult. But it's like, no. That Saturn in the second house is of me. That eighth house is of other people. And the Saturn's in that second house is me. In Capricorn. Boundaries. So the more you put your needs first, the more you avoid taking on other people's energy the better off you're going to be. So, what does that really mean? Well, one of the things, especially right now, is to know that so much of what you experience isn't you. The collective energy is like really off the hook. As I'm doing this, we just had that accident in Baltimore with the ship and I was talking to a friend of mine that had a experience last night. I had an experience last night. It was just kind of like, were we experiencing the mass tragedy in Baltimore? You know, from a Cancer Scorpio perspective, yes. So the first thing we kind of do is it's like, whoa, just because I feel it doesn't mean it's me. And the more you can step back and be like, whoa, okay. You know, the more you can protect that unseen world, that feeling world, the better off you can be. And so that's just like what the cancer Moon, Mars in the 8th house. Now we got a Mercury, Venus in Scorpio, Neptune in Scorpio. The Neptune's not quite in the 12th house, but the Mercury and the Venus are definitely in the 12th house. The perceptions that are available to you are going to be beyond your understanding. Like, how do you know that? I don't know that. It's like, don't try to lie to this person. Don't try to think you're going to get away with something. Don't be in that realm and have any challenging things happen in your life because this person's going to be calling you up on the phone. I don't know why, but are you all right? No, I must just be crazy. Wait a minute. Maybe I'm not crazy. And so this person's got the North Node in Virgo in the ninth house, South Node in Pisces in the third. So... That South Node in the third is just kind of like... Ruled by that Neptune. North node ruled by that Mercury. In the ninth house, it's kind of like we're not taught in this culture to really understand how much of what we feel is not us. Most of what this person feels is not them. Then we got the sun in Libra in the 11th house, ruled by that Venus in Scorpio in the 12th. Just like, whoa. People, you got to love them and you got to hate them. It's a very people-oriented chart, and it's also kind of like a leave me alone. It's like I want to connect and I want to... 
And it's like important to be careful like who you connect with and the honesty of them and their ability to own their own stuff. Got a lot of videos on this kind of stuff in my channel. You might want to check it out. So, that north node in the ninth house of discernment of what's mine, what's me. And most of what you're going to experience isn't you. Fundamentally, that would be one of the first things I would do working with this person. Just help them unpack the reality of most of what you don't feel. The sensitivity of that Cancer Moon, Mars conjunction in the 8th house with that Neptune, Mercury, Venus, and Scorpio in the 12th. Let's just say I couldn't talk enough about that. Feeling. What are you feeling? I'm feeling everything. And when I say everything, I'm talking forward and backward. Feeling all sorts of stuff that I wish I wasn't feeling. Would imagine a lot of people come and share things with you because they know you can handle it. It's important to protect that part of you. So with that Saturn oppose that moon in your second house, boundaries, 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 boundaries. Avoid People who can't manage their own feelings and their own energy. What do you mean? Avoid everyone on the planet? Oh, well, not everyone, but you know, there's a few of us out there. <coughs> Here's a quick, easy question for you. Hey, are you feeling such and such and such? And the person's like, yeah, that's me. Good person to be around versus bad person to be around. Hey, are you feeling such and such and such and such? Oh, that's not what, what's your problem, man? Why you got to project your nonsense on me? Bad person to be around. Bad person. Because most of the time, you'll find that you're right. You are feeling what they're feeling. You do know what they're feeling. So, the nodes. South node and Libra sitting on your sun. North node in Aries sitting in your uh, fifth house. Fourth, fifth house. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see. Let me pull up this other chart. Yeah, it's sitting in the fourth house. This eclipse happened in your fourth house. How good are you of putting your needs first? Because it's like that cancer, that mama energy. The nurturing energy. Society's painting you as this nurturing soul, which you are, but the nurture, you got to nurture yourself, mama. You got to put your needs first for, before you can take care of everyone else. And newsflash, you got to, they got to deserve to be nurtured. Otherwise, just avoid them like the plague. So yeah, feeling. What you feeling? I'm feeling everything. A lot of us. I got a big cancer. It's like crying. It's like the day of the eclipse. It's just like, oh, okay. I guess I'm crying all day today. Guess I'm feeling today. Breathing and feeling. So the more you can protect yourself, the better off you're going to be. 
So all you cancer folks out there, they're getting lit up like a light bulb with this eclipse energy. The coyotes are yelling out there all of a sudden. Take good care of yourselves. Realize it's not you. You're not crazy. You may feel crazy, but you're not crazy. It's the rest of them out there that are crazy. And the more you can kind of realize that, the more you can like, hey, just because I can doesn't mean I have to take care of you. You know, avoid that as much as you can. The coyotes are just singing all of a sudden. What else do I want to say about this? Yeah, you're not crazy. You're not crazy. You may be feeling crazy, but you're not. Everyone else is. <laughs> Be gentle to yourself. Avoid people who can't manage their own energy as much as you can. All right, well, I think that's a good start. Thank you, thank you. Hope you have a spectacular evening.